Yo, what's going on today's video? I got how to make Forsaken. This is um I I think this is part nine, I, I think. And stuff, but um so yeah, so just got a few things in this part and stuff. I'm gonna let y'all know it's two o'clock, I'm a little tired. Stuff so sorry if I make mistakes or if I sound out of it. Um so two changes. First, um I made it so that the killer is selected based on the player with the highest malice instead of a random um selection system as well as i finally finished what something probably everyone's been waiting for i finalized the round system so now you know once the count once the uh countdown is done the round officially ends and stuff um if there are survivors left and the survivors win um i made it so that it tracks when like you know survivors die and stuff pretty much to where like if all the survivors are dead and stuff it's gonna like every time a survivor dies it'll check or every time a player dies it'll check see if they're a survivor or, sorry, let me rephrase that. Every time a player dies, it'll check the current amount of survivors left alive. So, if if it's less than zero, or sorry, if it's less than one, then the round ends and the killer wins and stuff, right? So, handle that. If the killer dies because someone did tell me that the killer can die, or if the killer was just to reset their character, then the round would also end and the survivors would win. So, I also was able to do that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go on ahead, head on over to Core GUI, find the round frame. You can really just find the um, killer text label, set this to, is that visible to true, right? And then you can just duplicate it, and then just drag it above it, and then just go back to the old killer text label and make sure that's, that's, not, that's not visible. Then just rename the new one to notification text label here's where we're gonna put the text for like oh so and so team won the um match or whatever so then i'm just gonna set the background transparency to zero and then that's really it and then you could just uh, make it not visible by default right and then that'll be inside of the round frame then we can get into the scripting open up the core local script and then scroll down so you get to the um remote event stuff so boom we have this if event type is equal to round so we need to add in the round type so we're gonna go right here Press enter, then I'm gonna say else if round type. Or that's not useful round. Else if round type is equal to oh my bad, is equal to quotation marks end. Enter. Right? I don't know why there's a breakpoint right there. But anyway, um is equal to end. Uh first things first, we're gonna create a variable for result. Result will be equal to arg2. Pretty much um result is like who won pretty much. That's all it, like this is just the text that says oh the killer won or all oh, the survivors won. Then we'll set current killer equal to nil since the you know the round is over. Break loop, you will set this equal to true. Because you do also have to account for the fact that maybe that you know that like there's still more time left in the round, but all of the survivors died. Like the killer killed all them and stuff, or they left or something. And stuff and then you need to um break out of the loop so that it stopped counting down for the round then you're gonna use a for loop to get rid of all their ui or make it not visible i should say so for for i comma v in i pairs then you're gonna say player or well no we already have a variable so we're gonna say core ui get children enter and then you're gonna say v dot visible is set to false right and then we're just gonna we're just gonna scroll down just literally a little bit right here to the cutscene stuff we're just gonna do some copying and pasting so first you want to copy and paste the color effect and stuff which is just gonna you know darken our screen so paste right um by default you want this to be you want this to have a white color so one by one by one and stuff we want it to be clear or just not really visible i should say then we're gonna go down get the fade tween and then we're gonna copy this then we're gonna, we're gonna oh my bad we're gonna go right here paste once again and then you're just gonna put the word in between so this is our fade in tween right so fade in tween color effect and then you know it'll give us the black color and then, oh wait hold on okay or no this is great but I want black but it's up to you guys for what color you want so there we, there we go we have our fade in tween and then we're gonna set the text we're gonna say core GUI that round frame that notification text label that text is equal to results so whoever won then core gui the notif that round frame the notification text label that visible will not be set to true and then also core gui that round frame that visible will also be set to true then we'll say task that way and then i'm just going to put five seconds but it's up to you guys then afterwards we'll just set break loop equal to false so that you know when the next round starts um they're able to you know the break loop variable has been reset then we can just copy and paste the fade tween stuff again so 
copy. I actually think it was already still uh, copied, but so just copy it, paste it, right? And then we'll just change the word in to out. So fade out between, right? Then um, same thing, one second. And then the only thing is you're just gonna um, change, you're just gonna change the um, tint color. And now this should be one by one by one. So just wipe, so clear. Just setting it back to what it um, was before. Then after that, we're gonna say task dot wait, and then I'm gonna say fade out tween dot tween info dot time. Right, pretty much, pretty much the task dot wait is just whatever you set this to. Because keep in mind, you guys can set you guys can set these like this stuff. Like you can set this to whatever you want. Like it can, can if I want it to be longer or shorter, that's up to y'all. So I'm just gonna put task dot wait so that it like fade out tween, and then just get the specific duration and stuff so you guys can set it to whatever you want and it'll just wait for however long that tween um, needs to play. Once it's done, we'll destroy the color effect. Then we will update the text. We will say core GUI dot ground frame dot notification text label dot text is equal to an empty string. Then we'll say core GUI dot round frame dot notification text label dot visible is equal to false. Then core GUI dot it that inventory text button dot visible is set to true and then core gui dot shop text button dot visible is set to true since the round is officially over right so we'll set those to true um and then i want to say that's yep that's it for the local script we can then officially move on to the server script so we can go on ahead and go up to the server script and then we are done with the ui and stuff i don't know why I don't know why it does that. I don't know why it's so weird. Why it does that? Yeah. So just ignore, ignore, ignore all the breakpoints and stuff. I don't, I don't think it's cause problems. Anyway, um, so we're then gonna move on to the server script, and then we're just gonna scroll down. So in between the class change and start round function, we're gonna create a new function called end round. So local function end round, as the name implies, this is you know, this is just the function we're gonna use to end the round. Then the results, which would be you know whoever won or lost. Then press enter, and then you're going to set current killer equal to an empty string again. So resetting it, then you're going to say core events fire all clients quotation marks round comma quotation marks end, and then send over the result. Then you're going to use has that wait so task that wait one second. This is you know like so that the screen will go black for all the players. Then you'll see four i comma v in i pairs game dot players. You're going to say get players enter. Then you create a variable for our player so player is equal to v. Then create a variable for the player's character. Character is equal to player dot character, and then you will simply say player dot team is equal to game dot teams dot spectators, and then you will say char character pivot to, and then you will say workspace dot spectator spawn dot c frame. So wherever um you know your spectator spawn frame or spawn c frame, wherever your spectator spawn is. Then we will um reset their characters so, so that they look like the players and not like their classes and stuff. So we'll get our description. So we'll say description is equal to game dot players. And then we'll say get humanoid description from user ID. Make sure it's from user ID. And then you'll just say player dot user ID. Then you will say character dot humanoid apply description. And then you just don't set description, right? Oh, just a word of warning. If you're testing it like this way, like with NPC uh, tests and stuff like that, with NPC players and stuff like that, you're going to want to comment this stuff out, like just put two slashes. So to, like comment out both this line, like line 52 and line 53, because this won't work with M with NPCs, obviously, since for some reason when I was testing, it wouldn't work. I'm guessing it's because their names are, you know, player one, player two, and it's not, you know, an actual player, I guess. Now with regular players, it'll obviously work, but yeah. Um, and then we're going to go down to the start round function. We're just going to make a simple change here. Delete the local right here, right? This pretty much makes it a um, global function. Hence why we move the word local so that it can be called um, from anywhere. And then once the reason we do that so that we can go back up here and then you're going to go after this end, put a little space and then you're going to call start round again. That way it'll loop so that whenever we end the round, the next round will already, you know, it'll already get started. Right. So then we're going to move down to the um already here, the start round function, right? So after that, we're then going to go right here to the if number of players right here. We're going to say current killer is equal to an empty string. Just got to reset that and stuff. I actually forgot to do that before. 
then we're gonna go down here and then this is replace this is replacing the whole thing i was talking about so we're just gonna replace everything from like random username up to username list we're just gonna replace this so we're gonna create a variable for our killer oh wait we uh, i just realized i already have wait i just realized i actually already have a variable for it oh wait, actually oh yeah no i see what they're doing okay so yeah you're just gonna create a variable for your killer which we can just use this so we can just delete this so by default you'll just um you just won't assign this to a value and then this will give you an error but just um hang tight for a second so then we're going to create a variable called highest malice right then we'll set this equal to negative one the reason why you want to set this to negative one is let's say everyone in the server has um, like has zero malice then obviously you got to choose someone you know you know so we can't set it to zero and stuff because then that would be assuming that everyone has or that someone has at least more than zero so we're going to set this to negative one then we're gonna use a for loop. We're gonna say for i comma v in i pairs. Then you will say game dot players get players. Enter. Then you will say if v dot leader stats dot malice dot value is greater than the highest malice. Enter. So if it's greater than that value, then we'll update the killer to the new instance. So we'll say killer is equal to that new player, and then we'll also update highest malice is equal to v dot leader stats dot malice dot value then you're going to go after the for loop right and then we're going to reset um whichever player was chosen as the killer's uh, malice so we're going to say killer dot leader stats dot malice dot value is set to zero right and then boom we're done with that then we're going to scroll down a little bit and then right here obviously we have an error so we're just simply just going to change this to current killer because remember that's the name of that should be the name of the current killer right then we're just going to scroll down right here and stuff. This is obviously supposed to be set to one second, but you guys don't have to change anything with that. It was just a way for me because I left it like that by mistake after testing before. Then we're going to skip this end. Then we're going to say if current killer is not equal to an empty string, enter, which means there's current there's a current killer, right? Then we can say, um, hold on, because isn't there already a, or, oh no, that's current killer. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll go back down here. Then we'll create a variable for our killer. So we'll say killer is equal to game dot players find first child, right? And then you will say current killer because that's the name of our killer. Then create a variable for our active functions. We're gonna create a table actually. Active functions is equal to an empty table, right? The reason why I'm making this a table is because I assume in the future in future parts if I make future parts and stuff, um, I'm gonna probably add more functions and stuff like when the end if the killer was to leave or something and stuff like that so i probably have multiple functions running so i just made it a table so that we can collect everything so then we're going to say table dot insert make sure you pay attention here we're going to say active functions comma you're going to say killer dot character dot humanoid dot died connect function close parentheses and then you're going to go right here press enter right and then you're going to call end round and then quotation marks you're going to put the survivors have one to explanation marks right so this is obviously, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Whenever, if the killer was to die, or if they, you know, reset their character, or if someone kills them, then then we'll use the for loop. So for i comma v in i pairs active functions enter, and then we'll just disconnect all those functions, save ourselves some resources. So disconnect, boom. Then we'll, we will skip um three ends actually. We'll skip three ends to get out of this to break us out of this if statement. So we'll do that. Then we'll say task dot wait. Now here, whatever number you put here should match this number, right? So however long your round is, pretty much. If your round is four minutes, then you would put you know four minutes in seconds um, here. But since my rounds are three minutes, I'm just gonna put 180 seconds, right? And then you're gonna um, count the amount of survivors. So survivor count is set to zero. So by default, then you'll say for i comma v in i pairs game dot players get players enter. And you say if v dot team is equal to game dot teams dot survivors enter then you will say survivor count plus equal one right then afterwards you'll check to see the amount you'll say if survivor count is greater than zero enter then that means um the survivors have one so we'll call end round and we'll say once again the survivors have one boom right 
then we are done with our changes to that function we're going to scroll down here to the player added function make a few changes so right here we have the character die human or die you're going to go after we set the player's team to the spectators you're going to say if current killer is not equal to an empty string which again just means there's currently a killer press enter then you can really just copy and paste this line so select it Control c delete it and then just Control v right then you're going to go after this and, you, and then you're going to literally do the same thing so we really just scroll back up and then just copy and paste like this this part right here so Control c Control v you're just going to survivor count yep that's all the same survivor count plus equals then only difference is you're just going to change this so this is for when you know um anyone dies so we're going to say if survivor count is less than one which means no survivors are alive then the killer has one so i mean you could either put i mean i don't know what you want to put you could put the killer has one or i just put the survivors have lost that's just what i put but it's up to you guys for which one to put it's completely up to you guys and then um yeah so that's all of us all of the changes and stuff i would test it but like i said again it gets a little weird and it, it gets a little weird like unless it's just an actual server because i'd have to like change some stuff and i don't want to confuse people plus the fact that um i don't feel like sitting here waiting for 180 seconds and stuff for three minutes and stuff waiting for that so everything should work there are minimal changes and stuff if there are any issues let me know in the comments i'll figure out a fix for all that and stuff um so i'll continue the forsaken series so long as it continues getting love and support if it doesn't then i'm not going to make more videos i'm gonna focus on brain rot and other possibly new series i have coming soon so yeah but if you guys enjoyed the video definitely leave like subscribe thank you for watching and thank you for all the love and support you guys have been showing on my channel i really do appreciate it hope all y'all are having a great summer and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching